the creation of Sarasota County was very much related to the work that Bertha Palmer and her sons and her brother Adrian had done in the years before 1921. We've already discussed the fact that they brought in the population, that they established a strong economic base at Meadowsweet Pastures uh, out on the Mayaka River. They'd created a cattle ranch. Mrs. Palmer had a cattle ranch and a hog ranch there that used absolutely the most up-to-date methods to raise good cattle and hogs that did well at market. But the problem was this, that the nature of the American economy was changing in, in precisely that period. And you can only date it almost precisely from 1908, uh, which was when the first Model T car uh, rolled off the assembly line. The flood of cheap, available cars, followed uh, by an event at the end of World War I, where uh, when the war ended, there was a vast supply of surplus army trucks and those trucks were the basis of the American trucking industry. But cars and trucks <laughs> had to have a place to go. And people could see the promise not only of uh, tourism, uh, but of economic development from it. In fact, it was so obvious uh, that communities began to compete among themselves, states among themselves too, as to where these roads would be built. Uh, in, the in the teens, uh, we see the federal government begins to do, provide some funds to build roads. At the same time, state road commissions are coming into existence. Before that, by the way, counties were responsible for road building and cities, uh, incorporated cities. The question for the, for the people of Sarasota was, uh, how do they make sure that Sarasota is on the main, just as they had to fight to get on the railroad system, Sarasotans had to fight in order to protect their economic interests by having access to this new modern road system that was beginning to come into existence thanks to federal and state money. The problem was they were not a county. Counties still had a big say on where roads would be built within their limits. States, when they made decisions about funding roads, looked to counties for recommendations. The federal government looked to the state commissions for advice and direction uh, on where to spend federal dollars. What happens, though, if you're not a county? And it was pretty clear, it was clear to Mrs. Palmer when she was still alive as early as 1915 that Sarasota needed to separate from Manatee County. Uh, unfortunately, she died in 1918. The World War I intervened, and it really wasn't until uh, around 1920 that the movement for independence of Sarasota County really took root and began to uh, develop. The fight to become a county and secure the economic future of Sarasota was not an easy one. And, in, and it did involve uh, some drama and intrigue. What was going on in, in very brief terms is that uh, the, the government of, of Manatee County, of which Sarasota was a part, was based in what was then called Bradentown. That was the biggest community in Manatee County. Well, it had to break away from Manatee County and become its county in its own right. But how to do that? There was a provision in the state constitution uh, for that. Actually, this was a, t a period of time when a great many uh, Florida counties were, were created. Uh, but in each case, uh, there were often local conditions uh, that made it difficult. And the fight between Sarasota and Manatee and the uh, business community in Bradentown was, uh, was not entirely unusual, but it, uh, it was hard fought to become an independent county. Actually, is telescoped into a period in uh, kind of from early 1921 to early 1922, and it ends on July 4th, 1921, when officially Sarasota government, the Sarasota government comes into existence. It began uh, with the Chamber of Commerce uh, taking the lead along with the uh, Sarasota City uh, Council. The key figures being, uh, again, Mrs. Palmer's uh, 
ex-colleagues, uh, Arthur Britton Edwards was the mayor at the time, uh, and Joseph Lord was the head of the Chamber of Commerce. But the movers and shakers uh, behind them were really more, more important. Honoré and uh, Potter Palmer Jr., Honoré Palmer, who was the brother of Bertha Palmer, and those three are the ones that really pulled together the financing and a lot of the uh, dealing to make this possible. But in terms of the out front people, Edwards is by far and away the most important figure that's, that's involved. He, uh, he's a local native of Sarasota. Uh, he had been uh, in Sarasota his whole life, uh, had been a successful businessman in a number of ways. It's his leadership and his knowledge of the whole county, or the, what would be the county, and his contacts uh, with people like Pete Buchan down in Englewood to make it a whole area effort. It was very important when you went to the legislature that it not appear to be just Sarasota, the city, but it had to be all the people in the area that was to be encompassed in this new county. And Edwards was the guy that was best equipped to do that. And he did do it. And they put together a whole committee uh, that ran the show and planned what this new county would look like, what its, what its, uh, what its borders would be. There are small communities outside of Sarasota. Venice is not yet developed very far. Nokomis. Uh, is part of the Venice area, and that had, at that point in time, had, had, more, had more people in it. You had a, a little town at Fruitville. There were several others that, that existed. What Edwards did was to make sure there was a representative from each of those, of those towns, those little communities, uh, that was on this committee. And then they did these petitions. So right off the bat, Ed Edwards, when, uh, when he went to the legislature, had evidence that there was broad support for this to happen. The story in brief about this fight is, is, is kind of two parts. One is, is the problem of, of, of getting, getting the state legislature to vote for this new, this new county. And secondly, there was a requirement that the legislative action be voted on by the citizens of this proposed new county. And you had to win the vote of the people as well as the vote in the legislature to make it happen. Now the vote in the legislature turned out to be the hardest part of that. The Bradentown people, particularly the business people, opposed uh, what the uh, Sarasotans were proposing. Uh, and they sent carloads of lobbyists uh, uh, up to the state capitol to lobby against the bill that the Sarasota people had put in to create Sarasota County, and they blocked it. They stopped it. And it looked, and given the timetable, given how the legislature meets and when it uh, was going to stop meeting, it would be two years before uh, Sarasota's bill could appear again on a legislative calendar, unless they could figure out a way to deal directly with the Manatee people and cut a deal. And that's what happened. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce uh, in Sarasota got in touch with the Chamber of Commerce in Bradentown. They worked out a, a, a situation where they could send delegates to meet in Bradentown. There was a, a mass meeting in Bradentown. Uh, there were, uh, the objections of the Manatee people were aired. The uh, response of the Sarasotans was heard. And then they really got down to business, that a small group uh, from the t uh, each of the two chambers of commerce met privately, and they cut a deal. But that deal was that the Manatee, uh, the Manatee commissioners would withdraw their opposition to Sarasota becoming a county if Sarasota was willing to give up part of the land that they were asking for as part of this new county. In fact, they wanted the whole northeast corner. They demanded the, the 144 square miles of the northeastern portion of the proposed Sarasota County. It was painful, obviously, to lose uh, such a significant portion of their new county. But on the other hand, they didn't want to wait two years. 
And moreover, when they thought about what was in that area, which was mostly along the Mayaka River and uh, f flooded often and it was not heavily populated, they finally decided that uh, it was better just to concede the point. And with that, uh, the agreement was reached, a joint committee of the two chambers drove in a car uh, up to Tallahassee, it was presented to the legislature, passed unanimously in both houses. But it did have a provision in that law which said that the, the people of the proposed new county of Sarasota had to vote on what the legislature had done. Would, would they accept the terms that were, were there? That was done in May of 2021. And that's when that uh, other election was held. And this was a time when we, we meet, wrote, get to know a, a heroine. Uh, there's actually another her heroine besides Bertha Palmer, and that's Rose Wilson. She was the editor of the Sarasota Times. Uh, she was also one of the first women to register uh, to vote after the amendment was uh, the 19th amendment to the constitution was uh, it was passed it was quite a campaign there was opposition actually to uh, becoming a county it wasn't it turned out not very significant but there was opposition to her credit rose wilson did run uh, letters opposing it she was so tightly tied into the chamber of commerce uh, you know that her paper was a, you know it was a it was a booster paper for the for the community. So she, uh, she really did a lot to shape public opinion. And it is approved. Well, the evening of the day that the legislature voted unanimously, and uh, shortly after that, the governor signed this bill creating Sarasota County, uh, news uh, was telegraphed to, uh, to Sarasota, to the Sarasota Times office and editor Rose Wilson. Word quickly spread uh, throughout the county or the proposed county. And that night at Five Points, an enormous celebration broke out. Uh, lines of cars, there was a, an impromptu parade takes place with the biggest fire engine that, uh, that they have with the chief of the fire department driving the fire truck and very significantly, the secretary of the Chamber of Commerce who had done a lot of work on this bill sitting right next to him. And so people celebrated into the small hours. Uh, there wasn't time for planned speeches or anything. They just uh, enjoyed themselves and they got ready for the next challenge, which was the popular vote on whether the people of this proposed county accepted what the legislature had just passed. Harry Heigel was one of the leaders of the uh, movement to make Sarasota a county. He was a very well-known uh, local businessman. Uh, had many enterprises. He was originally from the Venice area, and his primary interest was in Siesta Key. He was the first to really see the potential of Siesta Key as a major tourist attraction because of Crescent Beach, as it was called, which was even then had, had achieved some uh, national fame as a beautiful beach to come to. So Harry Heigl devoted himself to selling property. He built a great hotel, Heigelhurst it was called, but he came to a bad end. Indeed, right in the middle of the fight for the, for the new county uh, in a bloody, bloody assault uh, on Siesta Key. Evidence seems to indicate that a fellow named Rube Allen, who was a former newspaper editor and was, all, he lived on Siesta Key, he, uh, he had some political interests. He had run against Harry Heigl to be mayor of Sarasota and lost to him. It's not clear exactly what was going on. He was, he was, this was a guy that talked at, he yeah, was a great at, raconteur of stories in after dinner speeches. Everybody wanted him to come to their organization when they had a dinner. He was very amusing. And here he is, there's some evidence that he beat this guy to death. And in fact, what happens is, is that as the word spreads, I mean, Harry Heigl is not dead when they find him, uh, but he dies in a car as they try to drive him up to, uh, to Tampa. Rube Allen is in danger of being lynched. And it's not until a sheriff of Manatee County comes down and picks him up and takes him to uh, Bradentown uh, that he is uh, safe. His trial, did he was not convicted. 
I'm not sure exactly why that was, although most of the evidence was circumstantial against him. Uh, and it remains to this day the greatest unsolved murder in the history of Sarasota. Uh, so Harry Heigl's kind of a famous character for, for several different reasons. 